there welcome back to my channel and uh, today I'm going to be doing something different there will be no art projects or crafty things that I'm going to be doing but I do want to talk to you about uh, perimenopause and menopause and what it means to you and what it means to me uh, so I'm hoping for a lot of comments and replies so that we can have a nice inter uh, interchange of uh, thoughts and suggestions to help each other here um, if you haven't liked uh, my channel, please like below and subscribe below, that'll help me out. But, well, without further ado, uh, pairing menopause and menopause. First of all, uh, I am not a doctor, and uh, so I'm not going to give you medical advice, and so this is a disclaimer, whatever I'm going to be talking about is my own personal opinion and my own personal thoughts and suggestions, and uh, not medical advice per se. So there's my disclaimer. Um, and I'm not going to go into the entire medical uh, part of menopause and perimenopause uh, because that will be quite lengthy. Uh, sh short story of it all is uh, perimenopause is the period before you hit men menopause. Menopause is the time after you've had one consecutive year of no periods. So menopause is all the time before that and once you've had a year of no period you're considered in menopause. Uh, the times leading up to that, perimenopause is different for everybody. Um, I know people that are in their 30s uh, that are all, all, I'm sorry, already displaying symptoms of menopause. And then there's ma uh, many women in their 50s um, that are finally going into perimenopause, menopause time. Um, I'm 58 and I had just started I just got into menopause, so it's been a year. I'm officially into menopause at this point. Uh, that being said, it starts years before this time, and um, there are many, many slow changes in your body over the years uh, that in the beginning probably you don't even think about it, you don't think about it twice, but they are the beginnings of your hormones change, changes. Uh, hormonal changes. That's what really all about your progesterone, your estrogen, your testosterone, all these levels change when you're going towards menopause and they are giving you the runaround. So, um, uh, I remember years and years and years ago, I'm thinking 15 years ago, I went to the doctor just for an eye checkup and I was complaining about dry eyes and all she said oh well here take these drops and that's it and then me of course i'm going back and i'm googling and checking things out and lo and behold dry eyes is one of the symptoms can be one of the symptoms i'm not saying all of it is of 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 perimenopause menopause it's hormonal changes so that's uh that was my first clue that things were happening and I think from then on end, I started tracking my period every month uh, just to see what was going on. And for years and years, I tracked my period. And, it, and I was one of those people that is on the dot every month, same, same time every year. I mean, every month, uh, forever and ever. So once I started changing, see changes in that a couple of days later or a couple of days earlier, I knew that was the beginning of my perimenopausal time. Um, I at first never had really many, many symptoms, never many problems. I had some mood swings in the beginning, and uh, but that's about it. I mean, not nothing major. Um, so, didn't have to do a whole lot. But my first thing that I started taking, and I'm thinking about eight years ago, more or less, was something called Herbal Equilibrium. And um, no, I'm lying. That's wrong. I'm going to have to look at my cheat sheet. Yeah, it is Her Herbal Equilibrium. And it's from a company, uh, Women's Health Network. And I'm going to leave all these clues below here. And I'm going to write it down, what, uh, what, what I've been telling you about. Herbal Equ Equilibrium is a supplement that has a bunch of different herbal uh, supplements in there that, that are healthful. It has ashwagandha, black cohosh. Uh, chaste uh, tree, kutsu, passion flower, red clover, wild yam. Those are the things that are in that. Uh, and um, the recommended dose is one or two times a day. So when I first started buying this, I took it as needed. I really didn't take it regularly. And you know what? It worked just wonderful. Um, it kept me calm, kept my mood stable. Um, 
and it was lovely it was fine so then symptoms started coming back more and more so I wind up taking that once a day for years um, I would say probably probably about five years I took that just about daily uh, and then I really got close to menopause and uh, symptoms started increasing and I started taking it twice a day and that didn't last very long I had to change it it wasn't working anymore so uh, that's and, and I'm thinking that's about two and a half years ago and that's when my symptoms really got severe and it's been just um, from then on forward that part of my life has been a nightmare with symptoms of menopause um, severe severe hot flashes and night sweats um, that's one of the that's probably the most common ones my my symptoms were so severe I had about um, probably close to 30 hot flashes a day and they were severe um, and in my particular case it started in my chest right around my heart area and it would be like a burning feeling uh, like literally that it was burning on the inside I have no Kevin and uh, then it would spread up to my head and then my head would like totally st would, would get beat red and then it would go through the rest of my body and within minutes I'd be soaking soaking wet so yeah, around 30 times a day and night, and uh, at night the night sweats to go with that. Um, that is besides the hot flashes, you would just get hot and you can't cool off. And most women will recognize the symptoms of throwing blankets off or keeping your feet cool or your legs cool, but the rest needs to be warm. So that's an ongoing thing at night. So with all of that comes insomnia. Um, uh, so, so there's your hot flashes, your, your night sweats, there's insomnia, uh, a lot of women have issues with brain fog. Um, I had for years, I had like acne around my chin and around my mouth, mouth and that is obviously also related to a hormonal imbalance. So that kind of cleared up, so I'm happy about that. Um, other common symptoms are weight gain mood swings, uh, vaginal dryness, uh, lowered libido. Those, I think, are the most common ones. But what I've been battling with uh, is the hot flashes and the night sweats. That's just been the worst for me, and, and, and that's uh, what I've been trying to treat myself with. You have, obviously, the, you go to the doctors, you, they're going to offer you um, hormonal treatments um, uh, or uh, bioidentical hormones, either way. Uh, and for me, uh, that was not a uh, an option. I won't do uh, hormone treatments. I won't do bio uh, bio identical hormones. Um, for me personally, um, bio identical still gets created in a lab. Um, the uh, results are not quite in yet over the long term effects of bio identical therapy. Um, what is the effect on breast cancer? Um, it's just not out there, so I don't feel comfortable taking it, but that's totally me. Anybody who wants to take it and who doesn't have an issue uh, with, with breast cancer or is worried about those things, that's totally up to you, it's fine. I do have issues uh, with, with, with my breast. I have a long history of fibroid adenomas. Um, my mother had had breast cancer, so I won't take anything um, that can possibly aggravate uh, breast cancer, so I'll just stay away from that. But that means that you have to find other stuff. So, after uh, the herbal equilibrium, I have gone pretty much to anything you can find online or uh, in your health food store that is uh, recommended for uh, perimenopause, menopause. And most of them worked for a month or two and then it didn't work anymore. And I went on to the next one. So then I... Um, I got really, really, really desperate because of the, the sweats just breaking out. You're sitting in a meeting and all of a sudden you're, you're just breaking out in sweats a couple of times in one hour. It's just, it was just awful. Uh, you know, it's just awful. You're at work uh, and it's just embarrassing. You're constantly wiping your head. It's just... Um, so anyway, I got kind of desperate. So I went searching again uh, to find for something different and I found something different and, and one of them it was um, a doctor on YouTube and I just skipped her name but I will write it down here below because she is the one who started recommending Effisoy. 
uh, Effisoy is a product um, specifically for menopause and perimenopausal symptoms and it has maca in it and it has dim in it if you're familiar with dim dim is a wonderful product i i take it normally for um reduce um breast cancer uh, risk so uh, that's in there and then it has a and i may pronounce it wrong it's but it's written down as aglamax um, but it is a non-GMO soy extract. Um, I'm not a, generally speaking not a big fan of soy because of the risks involved. GM, uh, the GMOs, especially in the United States of soy, are severe. Uh, so you really don't want to go that way. But you can find organic soy. So anyway, this is non-GMO. It's not necessarily organic, but it is non-GMO, so that's beneficial. Anyway, I took that and lo and behold, it, uh, it was helping me. It uh, didn't take it away, don't get me wrong but it really reduced the severity of the uh, hot flashes and um, how many I had. So that was a major winner, except that it was quite expensive. So that was the drawback. So I started looking on, on, at the ingredients on why this would be beneficial to women. And my own question has been for years uh, in my research on this, on, on, women in the East don't have as many symptoms with uh, perimenopause and menopause. So what's in their diet that is um, helping them? And it is soy. And the other thing that they're taking in a lot is kelp. So between soy and kelp, they have less symptoms. So, and then looking at what effi soy is in there, I found something on the market that has that. And I, it's been a lifesaver to me. I'm going to show it to you because I have it. I live on it now. Uh, this is it. Miso broth. Miso broth. And right now it is an organic product. And they even sell it in Walmart. I have it in uh, Whole Foods. And Earth Fair sells it as well. But either way it's the exact same product. So it doesn't make a difference. Uh, it is vegan and gluten free. It has iodine in it. Which is a wonderful thing. Because of. I'll tell you what it is in there. It's filtered water. Organic white miso, which is organic uh, soybeans, and then it has koji culture, um, which is another very good thing for you, and then kombu, which is kelp, and then some other, uh, it has some salt in it, mushroom powder. Uh, this stuff, and I don't even take it every day, but I drink a cup of it every other day, just a small cup, like a small coffee cup, and I warm it up. And it has helped me. It has severely, like I said, reduced the symptoms and the amount of uh, hot flashes that I get a day. So, wonderful stuff. Um, the other thing that uh, I personally have found beneficial that I take beside this is maca. Uh, maca. And I, again, I'll write it down. This is organic maca root, and this is per serving has 20, uh, actually, um, it has two, one veggie capsule has 950 milligrams of maca root in it. So um, this has been helpful. This is also very helpful with moods, actually. So it's all around a good product. And then the other one that I've been taking separately is black cohosh. Um, this is also, it's from Wild Harvest, it is uh, organic, um, and this one is um, 300 milligrams per capsule. And these two I have found have helped me the most. I've had other ones that, um, I mean, people have recommended different things that I tried separately, and they're all wonderful, but these two have actually helped. So I take this twice a day, both of them, this every other day. And the other thing that has, has been helpful is um, progesterone cream. And be careful what you buy with progesterone cream. Uh, this is organic. It's called Organic Excellence. Um, it has a bioidentical progesterone cream uh, with uh, photo, uh, phytoestrogen. Sorry. Um, it helps... Um, which are imbalanced in your hormones. So what they recommend if you're perimenopausal and you still are having your period, you take like a pea size, uh, you rub it on your, on your skin, on thin skin. 
Uh, and with thin skin, I mean like the inside of your arm, this is very thin. Your chest bone is very thin skin. So those are the areas that you would use to put a piece size on that. And then don't use it during your period. If you're in menopause, you can uh, use it um, for, I guess, what, 25 days and then stay off of it for uh, like seven days. So do the same thing, but just there is no period, obviously. So that helps. Then the other thing um, that I do find helpful uh, is uh, CBD oil. Uh, it helps me relax, it helps me calm down. It doesn't necessarily um, put me to sleep, but it just relaxes me enough that I'm allowing myself to go to sleep. So that is helpful. Um, and it helps with anxiety a little bit. So both, both those combinations have been helpful. I don't use it every night because I found in the beginning when I use CBD oil every night, it doesn't work consistently. So if I do it every now and then, it does help. The other thing is uh, melatonin. Uh, plain melatonin um, is also helpful, by the way, for inflammation in the breast. So it's a good thing all around for me, so I'll take it anyway. But they have the product Calm. Calm is a powder. You'll see it in, uh, it has magnesium in it. And I should have it up here, but uh, I don't. Um, but this particular one has melatonin in it. And... Um, it actually helps me fall asleep. So I'll, I'll put a little bit of, uh, in my water in the evening before I go to sleep and drink it. And I'm telling you, I'm falling asleep and I can sleep longer. Uh, for years, I would wake up anywhere between 1.30 and 2.30 and that would be the it, it for the night. I'd be wide awake for the rest of the night. With this stuff, yes, I'll wake up by 2.30 in the morning, but I'm able to turn around and go back to sleep. So it's been a lifesaver because I was going on three hours of sleep for a couple of years and it's just you know uh, beside being exhausted and not thinking clearly talking about brain fog that's part of the problem if you're not sleeping well your brain is not functioning well um, so this is it's been to me uh, extremely important that I'm able to rest and uh, you get moody and uh, you get gr cranky if you're not sleeping so it's just uh, very helpful um, I will get it and I will write down which particular Calm product it is because Calm has a couple of different powers and, but this one is specifically for sleeping. Um, the other things that are kind of no-no's that I do know for sure uh, in my particular case that uh, don't uh, do well during menopause and perimenopause are caffeine. Uh, caffeine will make your hot flashes uh, worse and certainly if you're already having a problem with insomnia at night please don't drink caffeine at night uh, because that just makes it worse so what I personally did is because I do want some caffeine so what I uh, have is a uh, I mix my own coffee I buy some decaf and I buy a regular coffee I mix the two so mine is 50% caffeine and 50% decaffeinated if I feel the need for anything else later or just for the taste, I get decaf. So there's my... But if I don't drink caffeine, I do better. I acknowledge that, but I, I, I need my coffee. So that, that's my payoff. Uh, the other thing that helps well is exercise. Please keep exercising. Exercising itself uh, will help you all around feel better. Um, so don't stop it just because you're feeling miserable or tired or whatever. Try and do it anyway, even if it's walking, just plain walking, but keep exercising. Do something. Also, during menopause, you, you're going to have some muscle wasting. Um, so it's extremely important to actually up your strength training uh, to keep your muscles strong and, and your bones strong because they can weaken during menopause. The other thing that's kind of a no-no during all this time is alcohol. Um, I find, and I, that's another thing, I like wine. Wine is my downfall. I like my glass of white wine in the evening uh, or red wine, but I get more headaches from red wine. So uh, I uh, most often uh, will we'll stick with white wine and with that organic wine. Um, and it doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, I get my organic wine from Trader Joe. And you can get organic wines under $5. So otherwise they, it, it would get quite expensive. But you can actually, if you buy um, French wines or Italian wines, you have a less risk of um, uh, pesticides on them. So it should be less of a problem um, drinking those. But anyway, 
if I don't have wine, if I have a night or two that I don't have anything, I will do better. So I know that wine does affect my hot flashes. If I drink wine, I will have more hot flashes than not. But that's, that's again, my payoff. That's what I have. So um, I think that is kind of where I'm at with all this. So I would love to hear your thinking, what helps for you, um, what product or, or action that you've taken uh, is helpful for you and makes you feel better and uh, sleep better, less hot flashes, less night sweats, whatever it is, brain fog, mood swings, you name it, what works for you. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know. And uh, in the meantime, I will write everything down below and uh, to let you know what has helped for me. And I just want this, um, this discussion to be open because I, I feel that we're not talking enough about this and so many women so many of us are going through this um, without really talking it out and helping each other. So there's my two cents on that one. Uh, hope to hear from you. Please subscribe and like below and see you soon. Thanks. Bye.